Zimbabwe has taken a multifaceted approach towards um, access in the rural and remote areas. Um, firstly, uh, we have come up with a very robust uh, policy, ICT policy, that covers access in the rural areas and guides operators as to what to do to make sure that communications reach all parts of the country, particularly the rural and remote areas. Apart from the policy, uh, we have also translated that policy into legislation to make sure that there is compliance which we can enforce. Uh, we have also uh, come up with a, a condition that when investment happens, when operators invest in telecommunications equipment and infrastructure, 30% of that investment must always be in the rural areas so that those areas are not neglected. In addition to that, we have also used the Universal Services Fund to construct passive infrastructure, the towers that operators can then come and mount their equipment so that it's cheaper for them and there's an incentive for operators to go into the rural areas. Basically, that is the approach that we have taken. The policy that I've referred to earlier also addresses this point. So the policy actually states what needs to happen in relation to women, in relation to the elderly, and in relation to the, to the poor people, uh, so that the digital divide is addressed. But further to that, we have come up with what we call community information centers, where we have areas that have been designated and equipped with telecommunications and ICT equipment, which people in the rural areas can use, the disadvantaged groups can use, and girls and women can use. But we have also uh, taken Girls in ICT Day as an important day to make sure we impart information to those disadvantaged groups. What we have done is we have taken uh, the celebrations to different parts of the country so that all girls then get a chance to participate in that day and they also get to get information on ICTs. Um, in addition to that, we have also used the World Telecoms Day and taken it to smaller towns of the country. Every year they are celebrated in a different town so that we get as much information out there as possible so that people can access the centers that we have put in place. We have also encouraged um, infrastructure sharing among the operators so that it becomes cheaper to deploy networks all over the country. Yes, it is. We have come up with a project that we call Connect a School, Connect a Community. And under this program, we've uh, computerized quite a number of schools throughout the country, but mostly in the rural areas, because those in the cities can actually do it for themselves. And the project is designed in such a way that when school children use the equipment during the day, in the evenings, the parents can then also come and use it as a, an information center. So that is a very good project that we think will take Zimbabwe uh, a notch higher than most countries. We have a very robust constitution that actually entrenches the rights of consumers. But in addition to that, we have reviewed our consumer laws and there is a consumer bill that is going through parliament now, which sets out the rights of consumers 
and how they are supposed to be observed. Um, the regulatory authority also has a very good complaints management system where all complaints are log logged in and then they are followed up to make sure the operators are resolving them. In addition to that, we have come up with a number of laws that promote consumer rights. We have come up with uh, quality of service laws, a, a piece of legislation that helps us enforce quality of service, um, including things like dropped calls and where consumers complain that um, their, their funds are just disappearing from, their credit is disappearing from the handsets and all sorts of things we have come up with uh, that quality of service legislation. We have also come up with uh, legislation that deals with uh, electromagnetic um, food exposure and those are now going through the processes for promulgation. So we are really um, beefing up the legal system to make sure we can enforce consumer rights. The work done by the study groups is very important to us. All these pieces of legislation that I've talked about were guided by the guidelines that we got from the study groups. So we take the study groups seriously and we take the guidelines that come out of there very seriously. Apart from that, it's a chance for us to interact with other experts and exchange ideas, uh, which ideas we then translate into our policy making and our legislation. We also benefit from the case studies, the experiences of other countries that we get from the study groups, as these then help us as we um, lay out our policies in the country and come up with appropriate legislation.